Polygons. Here's the definition of a polygon. A polygon is a closed plane geometric figure composed of at least three line segments that, does, that do not cross. Also, none of the sides are congruent. So let's unpack that. That's a big definition. Let's unpack that and see if we can understand each part. Um, a closed shape, here, um, all of these are closed up. There's no holes where something could escape, for example. This is not a polygon because the sides do not meet to close up into a shape. Um, a plane figure means that it's on one plane, basically 2D. Um, this three, um, 3D shape would not be an example of a polygon. Um, at least three line segments. So a triangle ha is, this, um, is the polygon with the least amount of line segments. And they do not cross. So you see these two stars here. This one is considered a polygon because the line segments never cross. In this one, you can see that the line segments cross, and even though this is a closed shape, it's not considered a polygon because they're crossing. And then additionally, none of the sides are curved. So this, for example, almost looks like a circle, but if you look closely, it's drawn up, I think, of nine um, straight sides. Over here, these two shapes, this one is completely curved, this circle, and this one has straight sides and one curved side. Neither of these are polygons because polygons can't have curved lines. Polygons are identified based on their number of sides and angles. And um, we have all of these different polygons that we're going to need to know the name of based on the sides and angles. So a triangle has three sides and three angles. A quadrilateral has four sides and four angles. And we're going to come back to quadrilaterals in just a minute and talk about very specific names of quadrilaterals. A pentagon has five sides and five angles. The pentagon in Washington, D.C. is built in this shape. Um, a hexagon has six sides and six angles. Uh, this is the shape of a honeycomb. A heptagon is seven sides and seven angles. It's kind of hard to draw a heptagon that looks, you know, like one of these with seven sides, so I drew an irregular heptagon, um, but if you counted it, it would have seven sides. An octagon has eight sides, which is the shape of a stop sign. A nonagon has nine sides, and a decagon has ten sides. Decagon, you can remember because a decade is a, t a group of ten years. So let's look at specific names of quadrilaterals. And a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides and four angles. Um, a rectangle, the, you know, we can, we, since kindergarten, we've been identifying rectangles, but we need to know exactly what makes it a rectangle. So in order to be a rectangle, it has to be a quadrilateral, four sides and four angles, with four right angles. And the right angles here are the 90 degrees or the same shape as a corner of a piece of paper. A square is a rectangle by definition. So a square has this, a quadrilateral with four right angles, but a, in addition to that, it has four congruent sides or four equal sides. If you measured this side, it would be the same as each of the other sides. So it has four right angles, but also four congruent sides. A trapezoid is different from these two. It is still a quadrilateral, but it has only, ex or exactly, or only one pair of parallel sides. So you can see that the top and the bottom of this trapezoid are parallel. That means they would go on forever and ever without intersecting. And then these two sides are not parallel. If you extended them like this, they would eventually intersect. So a trapezoid has exactly one set of parallel sides. Um, in, our in our fraction um, pattern blocks, we had a trapezoid. And it doesn't look like the traditional trapezoid that you might see because it, has, it does have one pair of parallel sides, but it has one side slanted and one side straight, forming a right angle right here. So just realize that a trapezoid doesn't have to have two slanted sides. It can have just one slanted side. And what's important is that it has two opposite sides, one pair of opposite um, parallel sides. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral, four-sided shape, 
with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So it has two pairs of parallel sides. So these two sides are parallel, or they would go on forever and ever without intersecting, and the ends are parallel. They would go on forever and ever without intersecting. The interesting thing is that a square is also a parallelogram because these sides are parallel and these sides are parallel. And a rectangle is a parallelogram. These are parallel and these are parallel. So lots of things um, meet the same qualifications. These two are a special parallelogram because of their right angles. And finally, a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. So it's similar to a square because it has four congruent sides, but a square must have four right angles. A rhombus does not have to have four right angles. So a lot of times people call this a squished square. It's like you take the same sides of a square and smush them so that it um, sort of flattens the square out. Think about squishing it on, the, on these two points. You would um, flatten it out a little bit. So a rhombus has four congruent sides, but not necessarily four right angles. It could. A square is a rhombus, but it doesn't, um, a rhombus does not have to be a square. Now, that line right there, I'm sure got a little confusing. So I, the next thing I'm going to show you is a chart that will help you keep track of all of that. This um, diagram is, I think, the easiest way to know how the shapes are related. Um, we start with quadrilaterals, and then we sort them by two ways. We sort them to having two pairs of parallel sides or only one pair of parallel sides. So every shape that has two pair of parallel sides can be a, a parallelogram. If it has one pair, it's a trapezoid. Then you work further down, and a rectangle has four right angles. A rhombus has four congruent sides. And then if you work further down, a square has four right angles and four congruent sides. So how would this um, diagram help you? Well, um, if you had a shape, let's take this shape right here and figure out all the names that we can give this shape. So we're going to pick the most specific name for your shape, or the farthest down on our, on our chart. So if I look at this, I recognize that it's a trapezoid because it has one pair of parallel sides. So the most specific name for this is a trapezoid. I can't call it a rectangle because it doesn't have four right angles. I can't call it a square because the sides aren't parallel. I can't call it a parallelogram because it doesn't have two pairs of parallel sides. So this is a, a trapezoid. Then I'm going to do step two, follow the lines up. Your shape can also be called everything above it on the path. So if, my, if I name it a trapezoid and I go up, I can also call it a quadrilateral because it has four sides. I can't call it anything over here because that's not on the path going up. So let's do another one that's a little bit harder. This shape right here, I see that it's marked with these little boxes in each corner which tells me it has four right angles and each side is labeled as seven centimeters. So that should immediately tell me all the sides are equal and right angles, it must be a square. But the cool thing is this chart tells me everything else I can call it. If I follow up, I can name it a rhombus and I can name it a parallelogram and it's also a quadrilateral. I can also call it a square because, I mean a rectangle because that's on the path of the way up. But it's not a trapezoid because as I follow the lines up, I'd have to go back down to get to trapezoid. So it's not a trapezoid because it has more than one set of parallel sides. So a square is also a rhombus and rectangle, a parallelogram, and a quadrilateral. Squares all of those. This one here, um, I'm going to pick the most specific shape. And when I look at this, my brain thinks rectangle. Right angles and two sets of parallel sides. So it's a rectangle, and then I work my way up. It's a parallelogram, and it's also a quadrilateral. This shape here, I don't see any right angles. I don't see any congruent sides. Each side has a different length. I also see that eventually these lines would intersect and these lines would intersect. It's kind of hard to see that, but if you took a ruler, they would eventually intersect. This is none of these shapes. It's only a quadrilateral.